Welcome back to my channel, everybody. My name's Soji Sakata. I'm a gender fluid cat cybernetic VTuber, and today we're doing yet another epic Rap Battles of History reaction. One of the longest in ERB history, if I'm not mistaken. The Joker versus Pennywise. Also regarded to be one of the best battles they ever did. Um, I've seen this many, many times, but I've never gone through and actually broken down each individual bar, so um, that's what we're doing today. Uh, first things first, if you haven't subscribed here on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. It's down there somewhere. Um, it's free and it really helps out, so please hit that down below. Thank you guys for all the comments on the videos, by the way. After I finish recording this, I am going to go through and respond to all of last week's. Um, I'm going to try to make that a habit of responding to all the video or all the comments on the previous week's video the following week. So, um, and also check out my Twitch at twitch.tv slash Soji Sakata. My one year stream or my one year, my two year streaming anniversary is coming up very soon. Um, so make sure you're uh, following on Twitch for that. Follow my tw TikTok. I almost said Twitter again. Follow my TikTok at Soji Sakata. And my Twitter, or my X, whatever you want to call it, at Soji Sakata TTV. All of those should be down in the bottom, um, uh, in the comments, I should say, or description, whatever you want to call it. It's 10 o'clock on a Tuesday. I'm tired. Let's rock and roll. The Joker. Pennywise? Let's go! This beat slaps so hard, I love it. The Joker! All right, whoops, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. So, we do have the comic book version of the Joker, the yellow glove version. Uh, I think this is the Mark Hamill-voiced Joker, if I'm not mistaken. I've seen this battle many times, but I'm not a huge DC or Marvel comics fan. Um, they're okay, but I'm more into anime and uh, other things. I don't know, the superhero movies never got me much. But I do know that, I mean, Mark Hamill famous enough, I, I know I'm... At least fairly sure that's his. Okay, and we've got the Bill Skarsgård version, the most recent iteration of It. It's funny how they pit the old Joker against the new Pennywise. Uh, I'm surprised they didn't go with the newer Joker, um, but I'm guessing Takashi69 was not available to play the Jared Leto version, so had to do had to deal with what they could get. Besides, we don't want a mumble rapper on uh, ERB anyway. That would ruin it. <laughs> oh, boy. <clears throat> Still getting over sickness last week. I am feeling better, but not 100% yet. Still got a little bit of that raspy cough hanging around. <laughs> All right, let's get into it. I love this beat. In my first appearance, the back was supposed to slay me, but I can't be killed. That's why they cast a phoenix to play me. I'm the harlequin. The Clown Prince of Crime, your sewer troll that Stephen King wrote between his lines. Okay, starting off strong. I I, I do love this. This is a battle where there are very few weak or bad bars in the whole thing. They they're all pretty strong right out the gate. So in my first appearance, the bat was supposed to slay me. That's true. The Joker was originally slated to be killed off. Um, like many other villains in, uh, comics lore, I don't remember the exact reason, but there was a, uh, a last minute decision to keep him alive. And of course the legacy of the Joker from there on is, uh, one of, uh, very well documented history. And then, uh, that's why they cast a Phoenix to play me. Of course, the most recent iteration of the Joker, the kind of sad, depressing movie was Joaquin Phoenix. And then uh, we have the, uh, you're the, I'm the Harlequin of Hate, the Clown Prince of Crime. The Clown Prince of Crime being uh, one of Joker's nicknames. He's the clown, and he's kind of the Prince of Crime of Gotham, so that one's kind of self-explanatory. But the Harlequin of Hate, because he does, um, he's very psychologically and physically abusive to Harley Quinn. And also the fact that he does kind of harbor a lot of ill will towards a lot of people. So that's actually a really good kind of, like, because he's not ashamed of it. So because Joker's evil, it's almost a flex that he's, like, such a bad person to everyone. Because that's his goal. So that's a good flex. And then you're a sewer troll Stephen King wrote between his lines. Um, 
Pennywise, of course, found in the sewers of Derry, Maine. I'm not a huge horror villain, but I've seen this battle enough to know some things. So he's the he's located in the sewers of Derry, Maine, and Stephen King definitely might have had a cocaine problem. So he is a sewer, technically a sewer troll that would have been written between some uh, lines of yeah. Uh, we ain't talking Coca-Cola, kids. <laughs> it's like cocaine. You know what I said. I all right, yeah, this is the first bar that makes you go, oh, this is going to be a good battle, because he starts it with that punch, you know, like, between his lines, and then just immediately is like, yeah, it's like cocaine. <laughs> when you got to explain your bar, because it, it's almost calling Pennywise stupid, but also explaining his bar, which I love, it's such a fun mix of the two. <laughs> it's like cocaine, you know what I said. I don't know how any kind of joke could ever go over that head. They all float, says the quote, but your films, they all sink. Oh, and as far as Mr. King goes, I'm a shining man. Wait, ah! All right, that's a good one, too. I like that. Um, what was it? Uh, it's like, okay, you know what I said? I don't know how any kind of joke could ever go over that head, because Pennywise does have a very tall, like, a, a, an, a, an abnormally tall head. Uh, I think if you look, you can actually see very... If you look very closely, you can actually see the prosthetic head that Lloyd has to wear to get the height of Pennywise's head. Um, so that that's a... Yeah, it's like, uh, yeah, if a joke goes over your head, of course you don't get it. But also doubling on Pennywise's gigantic forehead. Um, you're, they all float, says the quote, which is the quote from Pennywise, but your films, they all sink. That one is the only, that's one of the few weak bars in this, because Pennywise, or uh, the It movies don't really flop. There wasn't, the, I mean, the older ones didn't do as well as the new ones, but even they didn't do horrible. So that's one of the few weak bars in this battle. But I do like how he comes back immediately. As far as Mr. King goes, I'm a shining man. So he's like, yeah, even if I'm going to read Stephen King, uh, I'm not reading It, I'm reading The Shining. And I'm actually a not a it fan as well. I am a Christine kind of guy. I do love Christine. If you've never seen or read Christine by Stephen King, do yourself a favor. It uh, maybe uh, might make you treat your car with just a wee bit more respect. Because <laughs> uh, if, if you have Christine, it's probably gonna try to kill you. I made the Justice League look like just a bunch of super slugs. You lost to a herd of nerds who call themselves a loser's club. You be gobbled up in Gotham, so stick to your small town. Where you're renowned to see if it's brown, flush it down, clown. That, okay. It's ending good from the Joker here. I do love that. I make the Justice, Justice League look like just a bunch of super slugs. Because, yeah, Joker does uh, get the upper hand of the Justice League a handful of times. So that's a pretty good diss on its own. But then flips it, and he's like, yeah, I beat the Justice League, and you lose to a group of kids who call themselves the Losers Club. Yeah, that's uh, that, that, that was actually a joke on uh, whose line is it anyway? Bad team names. Come on, guys, we're the Losers. It's like, yeah, that, that's not exactly confidence-inspiring, I hate to say. So, pretty good, uh, a pretty good flip on that one. Uh, and that, I like he flips it again. By, like, you know, you can't even beat them. I can beat the Justice League. You can't beat them. So you'd be gobbled up in Gotham. Which is great alliteration, by the way. So stick to your small town. And uh, alliteration there. The gobbled up in Gotham with the G's. And the stick to your small town with the S's. So I like the alliteration that he's got there. Um, and, you know, stick to your small town where you're renowned as the If It's Brown flush it down clown of course uh if you're familiar with the phrase if it's brown flush it down if it's yellow let it mellow which i i, I don't know i'd actually recommend that but you know, you do you i guess so uh but yeah that's a good way to finish it off of course referring back to the sewer lines again so let's see what pennywise has for us are you joking you want to rap Okay, that is the best possible way I think you could start a verse from Pennywise. Rather than starting with a bar or a lyric, let Pennywise introduce himself in the most Pennywise way possible, by just being creepy as hell. <laughs> like, 
I love that touch. It's such it's so subtle, but it is so accurate to Pennywise's like style and attitude. Great, great start. You wanna rap? Rap 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 you are supposed to be the man who laughs, but those jokes were like your new move. Ha, ha. Mostly really sad. <laughs> you're John Doe with my deadlights, and you're about to fall from a new height. Cause you're weak and you've lost every fight. What knight who wears underwear over his time? All right. I, and again, Pennywise going with good bars here. We got, hi, you jokey, you want to rap. Uh, which, I mean, that's pretty basic, but that's where he does the creepy thing. And then, why so serious? You're supposed to be the man who laughs. Of course, Pennywise, or Pennywise... The Joker being a clown, yeah, he's and he's always maniacally laughing. Uh, so, uh, it's like, yeah, the Joker is kind of an enigma because he is, ironically, that's actually the Riddler's name is Edward Nigma. Uh, yeah, we're not going to go there. But um, the Joker is kind of an enigma because he takes things very seriously and then everything's a joke the next time you see it. And it's like... He's always back and forth. So, yeah, that's a good diss from Pennywise because he's like, I'm so serious. You're supposed to be the man who laughs. But all your punchlines are like your new movie. Really sad. Which the new Joker movie was terribly depressing and sad, which kind of odd for a superhero or supervillain movie in this case. But accurate. And it's kind of an interesting way to think about it. I like, I, I really like that line. It's a great way to come in, come in on a battle. Uh, and beep beep, you're a John Doe in my deadlights. Of course, a John Doe is an unidentified body. Uh, the deadlights are what Pennywise, Pennywise uses to kill people, but it's also a play on deer in the headlights. Well, a, de a doe is a female deer. Uh, I live in an area where there are a lot of deer getting caught in the headlights and uh, people hitting deers and totaling car. Deers or deer? I think it's just deer, singular. Or I think deer is both singular and plural. I hate those words where they're singular and plural. They're a pain. But yeah, it's also a play on uh, deer in my headlights. But doe in my headlights is actually a, a play because he's calling him a, a big girl. Um, which, of course, a guy to a guy. There's nothing wrong with being a girl, and I don't necessarily think it's um, a good way of dissing somebody. Eh... It's complicated, because as a guy, you don't want your masculinity challenged. Like, there's nothing wrong with being a female, but if you want to be a manly man, you don't want to be called a girl. I think that's the best way to say it. So, yeah, he's like, uh, yeah, you're you're not even just, you're not even a deer, you're a doe. Like, that, that's how much of a girl you're going to be about this, and I'm going to whoop the crap out of you. It's like, that's a good... Uh, it's a good disc to cha a disc to challenge the Joker's masculinity a little, while also playing on Deadlights, John Doe, and Deer in the Headlights. I mean, that is a crazy good bar. And then, of course, you're about to fall from a new height because you've lost every battle to a knight who wears underwear over his tights, it, it, which also is true. Yeah, he uh, loses every battle, to, uh, pretty much every battle, to Batman. Who does, like, Superman... What is it with DC villains and having their underwear on over their outfit? Like, it's called under for a reason, fellas. It, it's, this is not Captain Underpants. <laughs> Nightmares and I'm ruthless. This battle's like poker, the Joker is useless. When he's not in your cards, tell me Arkham Asylum, I'm crazy with bars! Oh, okay. A and a great... Uh, more great bars from him. I haunt, I haunt nightmares and I'm ruthless. This battle's like poker. The Joker is useless. So it's a it's a flex on Pennywise and his abilities, which is amazing. But also then, um, so, you know, yeah, the when you're playing poker, the Joker is taken out of the deck. It's not even in play. So yeah, if you're playing poker, that Joker card is pretty well useless. Well, if you're playing rummy, it's a different story. But uh, that's a great diss. Yeah, if, if you're playing poker, there's no Joker. That's a great diss. Um... Winning's not in your cards, of course, playing on the poker bar. Called the Arkham Asylum. I'm crazy with bars. Of course, the play on Arkham Asylum, which is a prison for the uh, criminally insane. The bars, and being that it's insane, crazy. Just a good spin on Asylum, prison, and crazy, bar crazy with bars. I love that. 
Pennywise's first verse is one of, I believe... I think it's probably his second strongest. I think his middle one's the weakest. I don't think Poker the Joker is useless. When he's not in your car, tell me Arkham Asylum, I'm crazy with bars. Jeff Nichols and Blade is fine. But lately the class has declined. Jared Leto came out trying to look like he was Dakashi 69. <laughs> so unless you've got a yummy younger brother, I think you'd better run. Because I've got 99 red balloons, bitch. And I tell you to take one. <laughs> oh, such a good finish. Uh... Jack Nicholson played you just fine. Of course, the original Joker from the first live action, I believe. First or second? He was one of the more well-known live action Jokers. Uh, Mark Hamill never actually played the Joker. He just voice acted for the cartoon one. Um, but lately the casting's declined because Jared Leto came, came out trying to look like he was Takashi 69 I told you I'd watch this battle. I had to make a reference to it somehow because that's just too funny. And uh, yeah... I don't know what the deal was with that version of the Joker. Like, that version of Harley Quinn from the Suicide Squad? Uh oh. <coughs> Excuse me. Wow. Something tickled my, uh... Tickled my nose there. Good grief. Ah, uh, but yeah. Jared Leto tried to come out looking like just this... Thug, almost. And it's like... Sure, the Joker's a, not a great guy. But he's more... Put together. I don't know. It was not the way the Joker should have been portrayed. Not my... Not... I never liked the look of it. But it's ironic because that version of Harley Quinn from that same series of... Or like era, at least, became like the most iconic one in recent memory. So, I guess you win some, you lose some. In this case, Jared Leto taking the big L because nobody wants to be called Takashi 69 Excuse me, Takashi Snitch 9. Ah, uh, yeah, wait. We're not mumble rap fans around here. The only one who gets away with it is Post Malone because it's Post Malone. I mean, come on. Go back in your well, you giggling sewer ginger. You lost to a turtle that wasn't even a ninja. When I flow, <laughs> I go Mark Ham with Hill Zigger. I steal the show like Bob Kane stole from Bill Bigger. Okay, yep. And Joker comes back swinging hard. I love it. Go back into your well, you giggling sewer ginger. Basically just more of those uh, same sewer bars from before, but in a much more well-phrased way. I like this way, I think, the best of talking about it. And I love how he also spins in this time. It's not just a sewer bar and moving on, because he's like, you, you lost to a turtle, and they weren't even a ninja. Of course, referencing both the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles... But also the It books. I've never read these, but I've seen enough people talk about It. I know that in the books, in the movies they don't talk about it as much, but in the books it's like the power of this turtle that beats It. I don't know enough to explain it, but that's, I guess, one of the things is that it's... it's you're getting beat uh, by a, the turtle is what helps them beat It. I have no idea how. So... Uh, that one's beyond my knowledge, I'm afraid. But that's a good reference. And then, uh, when I flow, I go Mark Ham with ill zingers. Of course, Mark Hamill. I'm um, referencing him. And just a good pun on uh, going ham and having zingers or, you know, good bars. It's a fun way to say it, but also work in Mark Hamill's name. And then I steal the show like Bob Kane stole from Bill Finger. I'm guessing that had something to do with the comics and people stealing other people's ideas. I'm afraid I don't know a whole lot about that, so... I think it's something to do with that. So, uh, if I'm wrong, correct me down in the comments, but I think it's something to that effect. A cab with Hill Zigger! I steal the show like Bob Kane stole from Bill Bigger! I spit out 60 loud, every joke of mine stings! Your three nightlights in a cloud beat by the kid from Stranger Things! When I compare your antics to the fiendish schemes I revel in, they pale like the moonlight you can dance with the devil in! Ooh, such a good... It's a short verse, but it's probably one of Joker's best in this battle. I love that. I spit acid, be wowed, every joke of mine stings. So of course, uh, rappers when they're spitting, that's you know that's what we that's what rappers do. I say we, I rap a little, but um, when a rapper gets up and d uh, starts rapping, they call it spitting or spitting bars. Uh, of course, Joker being dropped in acid in many of his timelines, which is how he becomes so pale and ghostly white, 
Um, yeah, he would literally be spitting acid out because that's what he fell into. So, and then be wowed because every joke of mine stings. If you get if somebody literally spits acid on you, yeah, that's gonna sting. So that's a really good flip on the acid. Um, your three night lights in a cloud beat by the kid from Stranger Things. I do believe in one of the... Uh, is it the new It or is it It 2? I'm not sure. One of the two new It movies with Bill Skarsgård, um, one of those kids from Stranger Things is in the movie It or It 2. I don't know which one as well. Um, so yeah, and they of course beat Pennywise again. So yeah, he... Uh, and Pennywise being an alien... Uh, yeah, he's kind of just like three nightlights in a cloud, and yeah, he does get beat by the kid from Stranger Things. You wouldn't expect it, but yeah, that's actually completely accurate. <laughs> um, uh, when I compare your antics to the fiendish schemes I revel in, which, it, it's not very deep, it's a pretty surface-level bar, but I love the linguistics. It's such a complicated phrasing of how to say that. Like, when I compare what you do to what I've done, is all he's saying. But when I compare your antics to the fiendish schemes I've reveled in, is so much more poetic. And I just love the phrasing. That's a fun way to say it. Um, but yeah, they pale like the moonlight you can dance with the devil in. Which, uh, have you ever walked with, danced with the devil in the pale moonlight? That's a phrase from something, but I don't know what. I've heard it before. I just don't know what it's from. But I think it's... It might be walked with the devil or danced with the devil. It's something about being with the devil in the pale moonlight. But I don't know the reference. Either way, you get the point. And I like how Pennywise is about to flip it. In the schemes I revel in, they pale like the moonlight. You can dance with the devil in. Pennywise likes the devil. We have so much fun together. But no one's dying to play with Joker. Except for maybe he's like it! Yeah, you gotta be evil to make that joke. Come on. That, that, just no. But I do like how he starts it here. Pennywise likes the devil. We have so much fun together. Yeah, that would be Pennywise's opinion on the devil. They, like... Joker's evil, but he's psychotic evil. It, like, Pennywise is just hardwired evil. There is no... I, I don't know... Of the two, I think... I think the Joker would be more akin to, like, chaotic... He's, like, chaotic evil, whereas... Pennywise is, like, true evil. Just, like the next level down from there because it's like there was never any law or rhyme or reason to it but it's not chaos either it's hardwired pre-programmed evil so it's like i like that i like that how it's more focused on like him being with the devil because yeah joker would just rather do it on his own but yeah pennywise i could see him getting along with the devil that's a good one and then of course uh we have so much fun together it's about him and the devil but no one's dying to play with Joker except for Heath Ledger. Rest in peace, Heath Ledger. He died playing the role of Joker because he was a method actor, and to be in the mind of the Joker was so messed up, it actually drove him to, uh, yeah, drove him to his own death. Method acting is a great thing until you can't determine what's real and what's not. That's when method acting becomes dangerous. Uh, be, you've been warned. Don't method act unless you're prepared for it. Um, also, best Heath Ledger movie, A Knight's Tale. If you disagree, you're more than welcome to have that opinion. But if you want my opinion on it, best Heath Ledger movie is the, A Knight's Tale. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. It's the only movie I know that contains jousting. And at the same time, a modern rock soundtrack by Queen. It just works. Don't ask. <laughs> go watch it. You'll thank me later. Finish this video, then go watch it. Fun together, but no one's dying to play with Joker. Except for maybe he's like it! You're an embarrassment. I'll be true like you beat Harlequin. That purple suit is something you should only see before he is. That line never gets old. I do love that. Uh, Puddin, you're an embarrassment. Of course, Harley Quinn always refers to the Joker as Puddin, um, because she is, um, 
hopelessly in love with a man who does not love her back. It, I never did care much for those, um, his Joker and her, or yeah, her her Joker, his Harley Quinn. Uh, I never did like those because it's really an abusive and not healthy relationship. Um, but I do like that. Yeah, putting you in embarrassment. I beat you like you beat Harley Quinn because yeah, uh, yeah, Joker's not exactly the best when it comes to being a uh, a good stand up role model for relationships and stuff, and he does relentlessly and emotionally abuse Harley Quinn to the point that uh, it actually drive in one version of the lore, it actually drives Harley Quinn to being, like, instead of a villain, more of, like, an anti-hero, where she actually teams up with the good guys on occasion to fight Joker and stuff, and uh, actually even brings Poison Ivy to the good guys now and then, which I think is kind of neat, and she kind of becomes, like, a... not good or evil. She's, like, a mid-ground player off to the side... Kind of like uh, Ghost Rider, which I really like. I think that's a good place for her. You want to be able to like her, but she can't be a good guy because then she loses some of her character. I think that was a good. Po- I think that was a good thing they did with her. Anyways, I get sidetracked. Um, I beat you like you beat Harley Quinn. That purple suit is on- is something you should only see Steve Harvey in. Yeah, I could actually see Steve Harvey rocking the. Wait, wasn't that a meme? Wait, 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 wait. Wasn't that a meme? Steve. I think this was a... Yeah! Yeah, 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 yeah! Because they're... I, I knew it! Anybody really be... Su- <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah! There actually was a thing where... Yeah, this one! Because he dresses like the Riddler and the Joker sometimes. Not... I don't think it's intentional... But, I mean, come on. Uh, Let me move my ears out of the way here. It's the same outfit! (laughs) I'd forgotten about this. Oh, God, now I can't unsee that. (laughs) That would be... (laughs) This was the meme, I remember, because everybody... They were, like, photoshopping joke. Yeah, Doc Ock. There's the Joker. Jojo, yep. <laughs> Lucky charms. Yep, this was the meme I remember. Oh man, that's really good though. That's such a good reference. I really like that. Uh sorry, I needed to I needed to pull that up because I'm like, I thought that was a I thought that was a meme reference, and I was right. So that purple suit was something you should only see Steve Harvey in. Yeah, that's uh I will say my man Steve pulling it off good. Uh, full suit? And then, of course, just Pennywise being creepy as usual. Ooh, and a good finish. So, from the funny bars, which I love, uh, I feast on your fears. That is technically what Pennywise feeds on, is fear. Uh, I'm the Dairy Main attraction every 27 years. And that's true. Dairy Main, the, the city where uh, the story of it takes place. And uh, I do believe it is 27 years every time he pops back up. I, I don't know that from the books, but I mean, I would think ERB would know enough to uh, do their research on that one. So I'll take their word for it. Um, but you know what? I have a secret. It's like a very special toy. If you want to kill a Batman, eat him when he's a boy. And that's, uh, yeah, that's that's fair. Probably the best time to try to take Batman down, the greatest uh, the greatest detective in the world in the DC Universe. He probably would have been a little easier to take down when he was a kid than he is now. So that's a really good diss. Um, and I love how Joker's about to flip it again. Don't you lay a finger on my bat, you little freak, or I will spend a whole week knocking out those prickle teeth! <laughs> I love that because, yeah... Um, the newer Joker movie does kind of make it to where, and I think even some of the more recent, not even necessarily the newest Joker, but it's been more of a theme here in recent Joker and Batman um, interactions that, yeah, it's more of like a mutual relationship. Without each other, I mean, Batman kind of needs the Joker for something to do, and the Joker needs Batman, otherwise there's nobody there to stop him. And it's like the two 
mutually exist to counteract each other. So with one without the other doesn't work. They are yin and yang to each other. It's kind. It would be like Superman never having anything to protect on Earth. He's kind of pointless. So I really like that because it is kind of a clever way of picking at that. But then I like Joker just takes it and embraces it. He's like, yeah, I need Batman. That's the whole point of what I do. So you better not touch him or I'm going to beat the crap out of you. So Pennywise tries to take a jab there, but it's a swing and a miss uh, because Joker dodges it so well. I, I love how it's so back and forth. Tell your author for his next gangbang scene. How about a little more PG and a lot less 13? Even I wouldn't stoop to that kind of impropriety. This is Earth, you space demon. We live in a society. Yep. So tell your author for his next, yeah, scene. How about a little more PG and a lot less 13? So, yep, there's definitely a uh, teenage uh, group, uh... Uh, hanky panky session, we'll call it, because I'm not looking to get uh, in trouble with YouTube TOS here. Um, yeah, there's definitely a uh, large group of the Losers Club, the one girl, and uh, yeah, uh, it, uh, they do a chugga chugga choo choo, and uh, yeah, I'd say, uh, uh, yeah, we're not going to talk about that, but I do like the reference, how he uh, he's like, you know, let's maybe keep things a little more friendly and maybe not have it be with minors. Like, damn, dude. It, and I like how the Joker's like, I'm horrible, and even I wouldn't do that. And that wasn't even you. That was the guy who wrote you. So <laughs> he's like, I'm going over the per over your head, which is hard enough as it is by what he said earlier, to your author and being like, look, I'm the most evil person in the DC universe. And I wouldn't stoop to that level. That's terrible. So that's... When when you set yourself as the bar, and it's and it's like, yeah, that's such a good... It's a, it's a great way of, like, the Joker, again, flexing on how evil he is, but also referencing that, like, okay, I'm horrible, and you're worse. And not in the good way of being worse. That That's such a clever bar. Um... Uh, and yeah, this is Earth, you space demon. We live in a society. Of course, we live in a society. The meme, the line from the most recent movie. Gotta work that in there. I love how they move. Oh, got that into the, got that into the bars. Kind of impropriety. This is Earth, you space demon. We live in a society. <laughs> I've seen your movies, so I know you don't hurry. But I'll shoot you down the drain so fast, so call you Tim Scurry. Ask Robin if I drop bars. I take smiles and I leave scars. Cards in Arkham will admit that. Joker just killed it! Oh, and another good couple of jabs. I've seen your movies, so I know you don't hurry, but I'll shoo you down the drain so fast they'll call you Tim Scurry. Uh, of course, Tim Curry played it in one of the, was it the 80s or 90s when that adaptation came out? The older It movies uh, featured Tim Curry as It. Um, also, if anybody knows the reference... I'm going to the one place that hasn't been corrupted by capitalism. Space. Um, if you know that reference, you get a you get a extra credit point today. Um, if you can tell me what that's from, you get extra credit points. <laughs> uh, but yes, so Tim Curry. Uh, that was a Tim Curry reference, by the way. In case you didn't know, that's your hint. Um, but yeah, I do love that, because yeah, the It movies are... I don't think they're, like, excessively long. It... 2017 film. Two hours, 15 minutes. And It 2, which was 2019. Oh, wow. Yeah, two hours and 49 minutes. That is a long movie. So yeah, that's pretty good. I can I can understand where that would be uh, a long run right there. Uh, so yeah, he, his movies don't hurry. Uh, and of course, back down in his drain, the drain reference again. Got to keep working that in there. Um, uh, what was it? Ask Robin if I drop bars. I take smiles and I leave scars. Which is great, because that is... 
again, a very apt description of what he does. He does take smiles because of how evil he is. He takes the smile off of people's faces. And um, he does leave scars. But he, that's also a double. The next line is, Guards in Arkham will admit that the Joker just killed it. Scars Guard. That's a reference to Bill Skarsgård, the guy who plays the most recent version of Pennywise. Very clever rhyme writing right there. And then, of course, also the, I did catch it, the uh, Ask Robin If I Drop Bars, because uh, the Joker does kill one of... There have been many Robins, and the Joker does kill one of the Robins with a crowbar at one point. So that's a great reference to all of that. And I leave scars. Guards at Arkham will admit that the Joker just killed it. Arkham? Ha! You stole that from H.P. Lovecraft. Who needs guards when you couldn't even escape Cesar Romero's mustache? Just yep. That, and Pennywise coming right back again. This battle is so good. Arkham, he stole that from H.P. Lovecraft. I don't know if he did or not. I mean, again, I'm going to trust ERB here, and I'm sure they, they researched that, which I guess that would mean that uh, the idea of maybe Arkham the name, or if it's the concept of like an insane asylum prison kind of thing. Not exactly sure what that reference is, but I'm guessing that uh, probably in the Batman lore they did kind of rip off H.P. Lovecraft a little bit. That's kind of an interesting thought. Um, uh, who needs guards when you couldn't even escape Cesar Romero's mustache? So, of course, he's throwing, you know, the Joker works in Scar's guard into his raps, and Pennywise is like, yeah, I'm not going to have to be clever with this. I'm just going to say Cesar Romero's mustache, because uh, Cesar Romero played the Joker, but refused to shave his mustache, so they just caked the makeup on over it, and you could very clearly just see that he had a mustache that was just like caked in white makeup. And it not, not, not a good look. Like that's, it, it's hard to hide that. And <laughs> so, yeah, that's like, yeah, you're going to be clever with it. I'm just going to come straight at you and be like, you think you're clever? Well, take this sucker punch. From H.P. Lovecraft, who needs guards when you couldn't even escape Cesar Romero's mustache? Jester, I'm on dresser, but I'm making my Fortnite and seal this bad up liquor with the cast of a Montanado. That is a reference to an old horror writing or something that I'm not familiar with. I'm guessing Fortunato is capitalized. You Jester. Dash. You Jester, I'm on dresser. I'm on dresser. But to make you my Fortunato. But to make you my Fortunato. That's either a reference to old horror works, or it could be characters from the work that I do know, The Cask of Amontanado. I don't know that... I, I just know that that is a work of fiction. It's not a character. But Mondresser and Fortunato could be the characters from that. I don't know for sure. Um, but that is... If you're familiar with The Cask of Amontanado and you can enlighten me on this, please do, because this is the one bar I don't have much reference on. I don't like horror, so I don't watch much of it. Uh, or read much of it. The world's sad enough as it is, I prefer happy things. Like rap battles. They're funny. And seal this battle up like a wizard cask of a Montanado. Who's with January Ember Flames? Mm. January was cap... Oh, maybe it's just because it's the month. Unless that's a reference... I spit January Ember Flames. I feel like that's a reference to something that I don't know. Again, if you know, let me know. If you don't know, well, join the club. <laughs> Ember Flames! You got beat by the Scooby Gang! Yeah. Uh, that's a great way to flip back to Joker's first verse, saying, you know, he can. He makes the Justice League look like just a bunch of super schlubs. Um, because, yeah, uh, he does uh, get beat by Batman when Scooby-Doo teams up with him. That, uh, if you take into account every canon event in the DC Universe, things are weird. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the Joker does technically lose to the Scooby Gang. Although, if you look into all of the Scooby-Doo lore, Scooby-Doo is like basically an omnipotent god. And technically an alien, so... Uh, yeah. Not going into Scooby lore, but yeah, be getting beat by the Scooby gang is not necessarily the greatest look for you, Joker. Jeez. 
Jesus, that ending. We. Uh, I'm the John Wayne of John Wayne Gacy's. So, of course, John Wayne, being, a, being the John Wayne of something is really good. Except when that's the John Wayne of John Wayne Gacy's. John Wayne Gacy being a famous serial killer. So he's saying he's the... He's like the best killer of the killers. Which is a great flex. And that's such a cool way to put it, too. I like that phrasing. Uh, the underground clown posse, my flow's insane. Of course, now he's taking those sewer lines. Also making an insane clown posse reference here. But flipping those sewer lines, Joker's been throwing at him the whole time. And flipping it back, and he's like, yeah, I'm the underground clown posse, and my flow's insane. And of course, with this crazy visual transition, like, what? That's insane with this... He turned into a spider. That's crazy. The, the VFX here are amazing. But I'm the poster boy for missing person posters. Again, another reference like the John Wayne of John Wayne Gacy's. If you're the poster boy for something, that's good. That means you're, you know, you're like the... Okay, you, you, if you think the poster boy for football, for a long time that was, you know, Tom Brady. If you're the poster boy for hockey, you're Wayne Gretzky. Uh, if you're the poster boy for golf, you're Tiger Woods. That's great. But if you're the poster boy for missing persons posters, you're probably not doing good things. Uh, and the Joker's going to float with me, flipping back again on the Joker referencing, they all float, says the quote. Well, yeah, and that's I'm going to make that true. You're going to float with me. That's an awesome, like, penultimate line. And he just messed with the best wall-eyed rapper since the Notorious B.I.G. I do believe... Oops. Notorious B.I.G. Eyes. What was the thing with his eyes? Um, what was up with Biggie's eye? Oh, Yep. So, interesting. So I guess it was strabismus, a medical condition in which eyes don't properly align. He probably had a, what would probably be like a lazy eye or something like that. Yeah, right there. Something like that. That's probably what he's referencing. I don't know why that... What, did, wait, did his eye... I'll bet you five bucks. Boy did his eyes go funny at the end? He did! Yeah, ERB never misses a detail. Yeah, he j the jo the Pennywise's eyes go funny right as he says. Since the notorious B.I.G., his eyes start going away from each other. That, that is again such a Pennywise thing to do. That is insane. So, that's the end of the battle. This is, again, one of the ones I'm giving a tie. Um, this, I don't, I'm not going to do this too many more times, but these most recent battles are some of the best in ERB. And this one in particular is like, I agree with people. I think it's probably one of the best battles they do or have done. And I'm not picking a winner. Let me know who you think won in the comments, or if you think I'm right and they are a dead heat. Because, um, like I said, I don't do it often. And the rest of these battles, I think there might only be one or two more that I think are a tie. The rest of these are all one way or the other. It's just, hey, you got to pick somebody. So, but yeah, that's where I'm going to call it here. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you guys next week with Vlad the Impaler versus Count Dracula. And uh, I'm hoping to maybe start on some e uh, extra reactions next week. Um, unfortunately, at the moment, I am... Uh, I don't have quite enough time, and I'm still not 100% healed with my talking yet, so um, hopefully next week I'll be good to do two reactions, and we'll start going from there. And then uh, also, keep, eye on, keep an eye on this YouTube channel. There's going to be the Cicada Golf Division coming very soon, as well as the Cicada... Actually, I haven't named that one yet, but it's going to be a rebuild series of my 240SX Nissan. So if you like car content, or you like golf content... Um, stay tuned. There's going to be more of it coming. Um, uh, but yeah, in the meantime, thanks for watching. My name's Soji. I'll catch you next week. Later.